Hi, I'm Lauren Landa, and I play Sailor Neptune in Sailor Moon. My very first voice acting job was about, I want to say, nine, nine and a half years ago. And that was on a little show called Magical Girl Lyrical Nanaha. I have never done any show before. That was my first anime. And I was cast as a character called Arf. She was a familiar to one of the uh, lead characters. And about halfway in through production, I was cast as another character by the name of Chrono Harlown. So in my very first project, uh, I don't know how this happened, but I was cast as two characters and I've never forgotten that. So it was a bit of a challenge on my very first show. <laughs> The night before a session, uh, depending on how long it is, two hours, four hours or longer, I try to rest my voice as much as I possibly can. And then the morning of, I'll do little vocal warm-ups. I'll do um, what we call tongue twisters, red leather, yellow leather, about five times fast. And usually it kind of helps loosen up the muscles and it helps release your jaw and everything. <clears throat> And I also like to sing. I love to sing, and even if it's just a little humming here and there, I love to get some sort of, uh, you know, the blood flowing everywhere, and I just love to warm up in the morning and get ready for the day. Some of the most memorable characters that I've had within my career, uh, off the top of my head, uh, definitely uh, would be Kyoko Sakura from Madoka Magica. Kyoko was a bit of a spitfire. She uh, comes into the series, I think, in, at the end of the fourth episode. And when she comes in, we assume that she's the villain, but it turns out that she's a little misunderstood and she has a past. And she becomes one of the, you know, one of the main girl, one of the main Vi girls, and she becomes one of the, you know, beloved character. The next, I think, would be Annie Lionheart from Attack on Titan which the show is very dear to my heart because it was my first show with Funimation and to start with a show like Attack on Titan is amazing for a performer and an actor. To be a part of a big show like that but to also have such a great character to play, that was great for me and being cast as that character was such an experience and working on that was such an experience. This is a dream role for me. Um, I was a big fan of Sailor Moon. Um, it was the first anime that I ever watched when I was, oh God, I don't even know how old I was. But when I first watched it, only the main five were introduced. And so at first, Mars and Jupiter were my favorites, loved them. And then as the series progressed, you are introduced to the Outer Guardians. And I immediately, immediately fell in love with both Uranus and Neptune. Particularly, Neptune became my favorite simply because uh, she was very inspiring to me. I looked up to her and saw her as this beautiful woman who was incredibly talented and graceful and, and soft and gentle, and that's what I wanted to be when I grew up, and uh, she was just an inspiration to me. And so Sailor Neptune, playing Sailor Neptune is honestly just a dream role for me, and it still has not hit me yet. that. I'm a part of Sailor Moon now. It's an honor to be a part of it. My father used to work for Disney way back in the day when I was a wee little lass. <laughs> and occasionally he would bring me into the booth. And while I didn't get to see any of the animation recording going on, I did get a feel for what it was like to be in the booth, to be within that environment. And that always stuck with me. Like I always thought, this is really cool. I don't know what's going on, but it's really cool. And then occasionally I would walk into my dad's office and I would see that he would be editing episodes of Gargoyles, uh, uh, Gummy Bears, the shows that are known as the Disney Afternoon shows. And that always clicked in my brain because I always used to watch them on TV and here they were in my dad's office. So I thought that was always a little cool. And I didn't put two and two together. I didn't put voice acting into my brain until way later. But um, I think from a very early age, I loved movies and I loved watching plays. I loved going to the theater. 
and just something about watching actors perform really clicked with me and it kind of just inspired me to want to do that. So I started at a very early age. And uh, <clears throat> when I got to middle school, I was in a production of Annie. And that show, as cute as it is, gets very old when you're in it for a long time for a certain amount of months. And then uh, eventually I continued to do theater. And when I got to college, I took a voice and diction class with um, a wonderful lady by the name of Peggy O'Neill. And she uh, put me in touch with a fantastic actor, director, producer by the name of Tony Oliver. And Tony, uh, I guess, liked what I was able to do in the booth. And so he put me on a list to audition for an anime. And then I booked Magical Girl Lyrical Nanaha. The first that comes to mind is beautiful, because I love that word. It's very beautiful and graceful and pretty. Beautiful. Beautiful is one of my favorite words. Any word that is long and I don't know the meaning of it, <laughs> and I don't know how to pronounce it, uh, which happens in a lot of sessions, which sometimes I will have to ask, how do I pronounce this? And then I end up hating that word. What turns me on creatively is when I see my friends in a show, whether it's a play, an anime, a movie, whichever, because that's what really inspires me. So anytime a friend of mine is in a new anime or a new play, I will go and watch them perform because watching other people perform is truly, to me, the most inspiring thing ever. And that's what really just turns on my, my creativity. I do not like being around anybody that's negative or that forces negativity on other people. I think that life's too short to, you know, disrespect each other, to disrespect everybody else on this planet, to disrespect anybody in your life. I, I think that's what really just turns me off is any sort of negativity or any negative reinforcement. When I first wake up in the morning, I like the sound of birds outside my window. I know that sounds totally Disney, but it's a nice thing to wake up to. I also love the sound of when a good song comes on the radio. I love the sound of people's voices, uh, depending on the voice, of course, but I think there are a lot of people in my life that have absolutely gorgeous voices that I could just listen to all day. loud motorcycles. <laughs> when I'm walking down the street, when I'm walking down my neighborhood, and if I hear a loud motorcycle engine, it kind of hurts my ears. So anything that hurts my ears is a sound that I hate. The sound of plates clanking together, I hate that. That is so unpleasant to hear. So anything loud and piercing. <laughs> I don't know if I would still attempt it now, but if I was not, if I did not have this career, if I did not have this profession, I, I believe I'd, I'd want to be a therapist, a marriage and family therapist, because I do enjoy helping people to the best of my abilities. Even though it's not always successful, I try my best. So probably a marriage and family therapist or a counselor of some sort. You have to remember that it is a craft, it is a passion, and if you do well enough in the world, it can become your profession. But just like any other job, it's not going to be easy. Some days you will want to give up, and those are the days where you really have to find the inner strength to not give up. And you have to continue to relive your passion every single day. So even on days where you doubt yourself, the most important thing is to just keep thinking positively and just keep working for it. That's really the best thing that you can do. <laughs>